You want to be careful too when you're using a tool on these bushings that you don't, for one, cross it between the two hots or the neutral, or two, end up swinging the wrench back and hitting that grounded steel case of the transformer. Hey, what's up guys? You're watching Bob's Decline. Today we're meeting an electrician at a neighborhood where pretty well all the wires are buried underground. It's probably my favorite neighborhood in the whole city. It's a neighborhood that's completely surrounded by huge pine and spruce trees and the power lines are all somewheres in there. Looks nice, but makes things pretty hard to work on. So the guy's got to get inside the meter socket. We can't have that meter socket energized while they're working in there. So we're going to isolate those lines. It's a little different than showing up and just cutting the two hots on the roof. We can't actually see where those wires are going. So there's a few extra steps we have to take in order for the electrician to perform their work safely. Also, it's no mistake, and you may have noticed that today we're wearing our IBEW clothing and hat. This is actually from Hurricane Fiona, which hit the Maritimes quite hard just this past year. I have been asked many times over the years in the comments section if I was a member of a union, specifically the IBEW. I'm always quick to reply, yes I am. I've never mentioned it on video where I simply because I didn't have their blessing. But after getting the blessing from our local union reps, I can finally say on camera that in fact, yes, I am a proud member of Local 37, IBEW. So in today's video, we're gonna do a, sh not a shout out, a roll call. Leave a quick comment after watching the video, letting me know where you're from and which local that you're a member of. And if you're not an IBEW member, that's okay too. We would absolutely love to hear from anyone that wants to hop on board or get some information. Being a member of the union presents a lot of opportunities and especially in safety. So there it is. Now you guys know, Bob's Decline, member of Local 37, IBEW, proud member. So I'm at my morning meeting with an electrician. So there's a homeowner doing some work that requires some new leads being run directly into the meter socket. They're putting in a, an automatic transfer switch. And this neighborhood here, it's all underground. Not only underground, but pretty much in the middle of a forest. That's the home up there. So our map shows that the feed is off this transformer. If, if it was overhead, I could simply go up to the mast, cut, cut the wires, feed in the meter socket, electrician go to work, hook them up at the end of the day. This case is a little different. Where it's underground, our map shows that I'm at the right transformer. However, we don't want to rely on the map as much as I hate saying that. So we're at this guy right here. This main line that follows the road is mostly overhead. There's a few underground dips, but all these spur lines are underground primary. So kind of leaving from here and feeding these three pad mounts are all underground high voltage. And we were doing the work right here at this guy that. all right so everything's lining up so far our switch number which is faded on that tag it's not very good it is marked on the front which is currently upside down 8001 or 8013 s206 so that drives with the information i have on the computer there are two customers, as it says. So one of these sets of wires belong to the house I'm working on. So there's one real easy tell here right away. We've got an aluminum wire and a copper wire. And the wires at the house I'm working on were aluminum. So right off the bat, I, I know which two to disconnect. We're gonna do that while energized. So we've got 120 volts on that top bus bar, 120 on the next one, and our bottom one's neutral. So if we did have to de-energize this for the work, there'd be basically two options. One, we could pull the bayonet fuse, which would isolate the secondary bushings only. This guy right here would still be energized. If we wanted this elbow to be de-energized as well, if the electricians were working right in the pad mount, for some reason pulling in a new service, for example, we would have to isolate this cable as well. And the way we'd do that, 
at the next transformer back, we'd pull the elbow off and park it on the parking stand, which doesn't have an adapter on it. You can put an adapter on with a stick. And uh, it had two, two bushings, one to place the elbow on and one to ground it. I'll show you guys this to relieve tank pressure. Operate pressure relief valve twice before removal and once before insertion of bayonet fuse holder. Failure to relieve the tank pressure may result in oil spillage and damage to molded rubber bushing connectors. So, power generates heat. The more load that's on it, the more heat. And of course, outside air temperature can affect that. When you, when you open that bayonet fuse, that, that tank's completely sealed. So you flip that open and start to pull that out. If there's any pressure at all, that oil is going to come firing directly out at you. So before you do anything, you always have to release. You see there was just a small amount of air pressure in that tank. If that pressure release valve is in near the high voltage stuff, I recommend doing that with a hot stick. Even even then, it doesn't doesn't hurt to use a hot stick so that you're not right in front of the pressure release valve. And just like our substations and most other electrical equipment, all the different components are bonded. Now, of course, it is connected through those hinges. However, if if there were a fault, it's not a good electrical connection. So you'd see some marking right at the hinge. That's why we have that ground strap that's connected right into the frame along with our neutral which has a ground strap and our main grounds which we've got on this side here and on this side here go right down and into the ground at two separate locations we've also got a little strand off the ground off the concentric neutral actually that's a bleeder to ground the elbow on the high voltage and a bleeder between the bushing insert right here and the frame of the pad mount transformer. This this guy here, this elbow cover on the feed through side, again, has a bleeder. If that wasn't connected and you were to hit that up against the side of the case, you would see a small amount of arcing from the stray voltage that's generated inside that cap. The wire inside the meter socket was aluminum, so pretty safe bet that it's aluminum wires we're removing. However, we, we could be at the wrong location altogether. Um, perhaps the map is wrong. Maybe this customer is fed off of another pad mount. There's, there's a few of them in the woods here. So we're gonna take our clip on hand meter. We're gonna select amperage right there. So we're looking to see one of those sets of wires with a bunch of load on it and the other with none. So this is the wire that has the meter removed. 0.3 amp. And this guy here has got 8 amps. So we'll check the next wire, which is right here. 8 amps on that one as well. And last but not least, so there's no current on that wire as well. So these are the two wires we're going to be taking off, and they both have zero amps. Regardless of how sure you are, when you're doing this stuff live, you, you got to take an amp check on those wires. You start undoing that bolt, and there's 20 or 30 amps on it, and uh, you're going to find out pretty quick. So a lot of times, it's easier to use your impact gun to take these off, but we're going to use a couple speed wrenches. Just a little easier working in there with everything being energized. So if there, if there was load on that, that would already be arcing. You'd hear it start arcing. Some of you may have seen the video posted last year where the impact gun hit across the two bus bars and uh, pretty dramatic results. You want to be careful too when you're using a tool on these bushings that you don't, for one, cross between the two hots or the neutral, or two, end up swinging a wrench back and hitting that grounded steel case of the transformer. Now this tool is designed specifically for electrical work where the two metal ends aren't connected. In underneath this casing here, 
there is a large air gap so that there's no continuity between the two sides. If I did accidentally contact it, chances are I'd be safe, but you don't want to take those chances. So we'll leave that bolt and nut right on that lug, that way we don't lose it. And we want to bend this wire down inside the pad mount in a way that it doesn't spring up into that line stuff while the electricians are working. Alright, so we're all set. Let's lock this guy up. Alright, so the last step we're going to do before we give the electricians the okay to go to work is check the voltage in the meter socket, which I completely anticipate it being zero. However, we are going to make absolute sure. And then once their work's complete, we'll do a quick inspection of their work and put those leads back on. Pretty much the same way they come off. All right, guys, so that wraps up another one. We have the customer all hooked back up. Thanks for stopping in, as always, and we'll see you all soon.